All right, Addison. So here is um, the first problem for Tuesday's work, lesson 100. And it says the ratio of big ships to small ships in the harbor was two to nine. So the first thing we're going to do is start our table. So we're going to say uh, ratio is one column and quantity or number is the other column, right? So we put a line under that. Then we have our little columns. And we are going to say B for big ships and S for small ships. And then we have T for total. And I made my lines a little bit too long, so let me erase that. All right, so the ratio of big ships to small ships was 2 to 9. So big ships is listed first, so the 2 is for the big ships because the 2 is listed first. So the ratio of big ships, we're going to put in here the number 2. And small ships is listed second, and 9 is listed second. So 9 goes with the S for small ships under the ratio. All right, are you with me? So that gives us the ratio, but it doesn't give us the total group. The total group is going to be 2 plus 9, and that is going to be 11. So out of the whole group, there are 11. Two of them are big ships, nine of them are small ships. Do you see how that works? If there were 200, I'm back to the second sentence now, if there were 242 ships in the harbor, that's the total number of ships. So we put that under a quantity for the total. So 240, and I don't know why my pen is just not doing right. 242, there we go. But we don't know how many were big, we don't know how many were small. So we're gonna put a little b for big and a little s for small, and that's gonna be the variable we use for each one. So this is what you should have filled out right here. For big, you should have two. For small, you should have nine. For total, you should have 11. And then for quantity, you should have 242, okay? That's how you fill that out. This is your table to start finding out what those quantities are. Step two. Set up the proportion for the big ships. So that's what we're going to do. The proportion for the big ships, this is step two. We're going to take the number 2 over 11 because that is the ratio of the big ships to the total. So 2 over 11. And we don't have the total number of small ships, so we can't set up a ratio related relating big ships to small we can only relate the big ships to the total because that's the number we're given. We're given the total number of ships. So that is why we have to set up a line for total and add them together. So 2 over 11 represents the big ships. There are 2 out of 11 that are big. That is going to equal B because we don't know the quantity. So B is our variable for big ships over 242 because 242 is the quantity that is the total that is the same as the 11 for the ratio, right? You see straight across the bottom. If you look at it, it's just like this grid. We have the total on the bottom and we have the big ships across the top. So we have 2 and B, 2 and B, 11, 242, 11, 242. See how that works? Makes sense, right? So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to put those two fractions right here. We're going to say, um, let me go down to our fraction button. I'm going to click the fraction button, and then it pops back up to wherever I'm clicked, 2 over 11. And then this number, I'm going to put another fraction in here. Let me put the fraction button. And that's going to be B over 242. All right, so you see how that works. That's our step two. Now we're going to cross multiply. That is step three. Let me write step three up here. Step three is where we cross multiply these two. So we would say two times 242, so two times 242 is equal to 11 times B. All right, that's what we put in here. 2 times 242 and then 
11 times B, right? So you see how that works? We multiplied this one times this one and this one times this one. And we put that in here. Then we did the math. 2 times 242 is the same thing as 484. And 11 times B is just 11B. All right, so those are steps. So let me write that here so you can see that. 484 equals 11B, right? We're just working the problem on the page. Step four. So step four, we're going to start solving. Divide both sides by what? If we have 11 times B, we know that 11 times B is equal to 44. So we have to divide both sides by 11 to solve it. So that's what we're going to do now. 484 divided by 11 equals 11B divided by 11. We know that um, 11 divided by 11 is 1, so that's 1B all by itself. And 484 divided by 11, all you do is you pull up your calculator, and I haven't done that yet. I think it's 44. So 484 divided by 11, yes, is 44. So 44 is equal to B. So 44 is the number of big ships. Now what we're going to do is subtract 44 from the total ships to find the number of small ships. So 242 minus 44 is equal to 198. Right? Let's double check. I think that's right. I did it in my head. 242 minus 44 is equal to 198. Yes. So that is step five. And that is finding the small ships. So 242 was the total. And now we know that there were 44 big ships, right? So now we got to find the small ships. So we're going to go over here and say 242 minus 44 equals 198. So now we know that there are 198 small ships, right? So now we can complete the table with all the information. I don't know why it does that sometimes. So here we go. So we have two and uh, I think the button is touched. There we go. Uh, 2 and 44, 9 and 198, 11 and 242. So that is the information as we have solved it. The ratio was 2 to 9, which gave us a total of 11 in that group. And when we multiplied out, um, our scale factor is 22. So 2 times 22 is 44. 9 times 22 was 198. 11 times 22 is 242. But that is the quantity, and that's how we solve that. Okay? Do you understand how to put this in now? It's all about solving this table. You start with this table, and you finish with this table completed. All right? All right. Uh, let's do one more. Let's check our answers first. And it looks like they're all correct. So the benefit of doing it like this is when you get a wrong, an X, that tells you where you're messing up. So if you're getting X's up here in this top bit, that means you don't understand how to set up the table. If you're getting X's somewhere in here, that means that you are misunderstanding how to set up a proportion or how to cross multiply, all right, or how to solve. That's why I did it like that. So you could see step by step where you are misunderstanding something so that you know what questions to ask me when we come to class. All right, let's do one more just for the sake of um, get, being really thoroughly done with this. If I can get this to clear. There it goes. Clear page. All right, Farmer Brown wanted to plant her farm with rye and barley in the ratio of seven acres to five acres. So let's start with our table. Here's our ratio. And here's the number of acres. We're going to use A for acres. Um, so we have rye 
and then we have barley, and then we have the total number, right? So we draw these lines here. All right. So the ratio of rye to barley, rye is first, and the number seven is first. So seven goes next to rye under the ratio. Uh, barley is second, and the number five is second. So five is the number of acres of barley she wants to do. Now, if there are seven acres of rye and five acres of barley in her ratio, then that means she's talking about how to split up 12 acres total. So if she had 240 acres, how many would she plant with rye and how many with barley? So we know she has a total of 240 acres, but we don't know how she's going to split them yet. So let's do a little R for rye and a little B for barley. Now we're going to start to solve. This was step one. We set up our, um, we set up our table and we could type that information in. Seven, five, 12, 240. Okay. All right. Step two, we set up the proportion for rye. So rye is seven, right? Equals and then R. And we don't have anything we can compare it to. When you solve a proportion, you can't have two unknowns, so we have to use this line down here. We can only solve for one variable at a time with a proportion. So we put the total in 12 and 240, right? That's step two. So let's put in those, um, those fractions. I'm going to click the fraction button. And that's going to be 7 over 12. Oops. 12. I still didn't get it right. And then we'll put in the fraction for rye, which is going to be R over 240. Right? Now we're going to cross multiply. This is step three. Step three, we're going to say 7 times 240. All right, so we're going to cross this to this. So 7 times 240, and then this one to this one, 12 times R. All right, so 12 times R over here. And then we're going to actually do the math. So I pull up my calculator, and I say 7 times 240 equals 1680. So 1680. And 12 times R is just 12R. So 1680 and 12R, right? So now we know that if we have 12 times R equals 1680, that we should divide by 12, right? So we divide both sides by 12 to solve. And when we divide 1680 by 12, divided by 12, that's 140. So 140 is the number of acres of rye. So 140. Now we're going to subtract 140 from the total number of acres because that's how many rye acres we have. We need to subtract that from the total. So we're going to say 240 because that's our total number of acres. The number of acres that we want to subtract is 140, so we can see how many acres of barley we have left, and that's going to be 100, right? So this was step four. So step five is 240 minus 140 equals 100. So 100 acres of barley. So now we just finish out our table. Let's erase the R and the B. All right, so we had 140 of rye, and that left us 100 acres of barley. That's because 140 plus 100 is equal to 240. So let's just fill out the table the way it is. 7 is 140. 5 is 100. 
and then that's a total of 12 that equals 240. And if you look really close at these, if we said 7 times 20, that would equal 140. Seven, or 5 times 20 would equal 100, and 12 times 20 is equal to 240, right? 20 is what is called our scale factor. That means we have 20 sets of 12 acres, right? All right, so don't worry about this bit too much. We'll get into that as we go further into the uh, harder algebra stuff. But that's what we call a scale factor. We're scaling this number up. It's like when you have a fraction, like you have a fraction 1 over 2, and you scale it up to 4 over 8. This is the same value, right? It's just that we multiplied this whole thing by 4. That's exactly what a scale factor is. The scale factor here is 4 because we went from 1 half to 4 eighths. The scale factor here is 20 because we multiplied both of, all of these by 20 to get these next numbers. That's all it is. It's not super hard. So let's check our work over here. And look, we got them all right. How about that? All right, so there are um, a couple more. Like when you get to number four here, uh, I'm not making you do the final table again. That final table, having to rewrite the table like we did over here on this one, those are six freebie points, right? Filling that out, because you've already done it up here, but filling it out down here, that's six freebie points. You're not getting those freebie points over here because by the time you get to the third one, you should know how to do it. Um, so you have that original table, and now I'm not labeling the steps for you. You have to do it on your own. So this is proportion. This is where you do step two. This is where you cross multiply. This is where you find your answer. You, you do your division. And then this is the number of green marbles. So let me show you how to do one of these and then I'm gonna be done. Let me see if it gets any harder as we go forward. Yes, when we get to this one, all you do is fill in the answers here. That'd be the same thing as filling in the final table here. If you can fill in the final table, it means that you did all of these right. So let me show you how to do these. It's the same thing. So what you're gonna do is uh, you have ratio of green to purple marbles was three to 17. So three, because green comes first, 17, because 17 was second, and there were 400 total. So that goes here, 400 total, because that's the quantity. Well, we have to add these two together to get the total of the ratio, so it's 20. Three and 17 is 20. So now you make your proportion here, and we're looking for the number of green marbles, so we're gonna use the green number here. So three over 20 is the same thing as G over 400, right? And then we're gonna cross multiply, three times 400, so three times 400, and then uh, 20 times G, so 20 times G. Three times 400 is 1200, and 20 times G is just 20G. Do you follow? We're solving the problem just a little bit faster now. Now we divide both sides by 20, and we should get 60, because 60 times 20 is 1,200. So there should be 60 green marbles. So check it and see. Yep, we did it right, because all of them have a check mark. I hope that you're seeing how to solve this and how to um, put things in the blank. You're gonna have another one just like this right here. And then you're going to have one where you just put all the correct answers, the finished answers, into the table. And if you can do that, then you can get them all right. All right, that is all I have for you, sweetheart. Um, I hope you have a good rest of the week, such that it is. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.